As you can see here, the ribbon is placed right inside the dart marking on the right side of the bodice. About three-eighths of an inch over the marking should do it. Once you have it in place, you can sew it lightly with the needle and thread. This is called basting. And don't worry if those stitches aren't exactly perfect. Basting is only temporary, and you'll be pulling them out later anyway. Pinch the darts close by matching up the mark lines that show each side of the dart. When this happens, the end of the ribbon goes inside the dart. Start pinning on the wrong side of the fabric, which is the side you're going to be sewing on. Pin horizontally like this, which makes it easy to pull the pins out as you're sewing on the machine. Start sewing at the wide end of the dart and work your way to the point. When the dart is closed, give yourself enough thread ends to tie together at the end point. This is a neat finish so the end of the dart doesn't get too pointy, which isn't a pretty look. Press the darts towards the center so that everything is nice and smooth. As you can see, these ribbons aren't going anywhere. Now that you've got this done, you can take those basting stitches out. Their job is over. As you can see here, the seams are pressed open, which will be nice and smooth. I've also taken the bodice lining pieces and put them together using exactly the same steps I did for the bodice. Stay stitching at the neck, darts, side seams, you name it. The only thing I didn't do the same is put the ribbon ties on the lining. The lining is there to finish off the bodice, and it isn't meant to be seen, and there's no need for ribbon on the inside. Now that I have the bodice flat, with the right side facing me, I can take the bodice lining and lay it right on top like this. I'm keeping the wrong side of the lining facing me, so when I lay it on top of the bodice, the pretty sides of both bodice and lining are facing each other. I'm matching up the edges at the neckline and both armholes. I'm pinning the bodice and the lining together, pinning along the entire neckline and both armholes. Since these were cut from the same pattern pieces and they've been sewn the same way all the way through, they're matching up perfectly. This is ready to go to the machine to be sewn in a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Curves are trickier to sew than straight seams, so take your time and make sure you stick to the 5 8 inch marking on your machine. See how these little bits have been cut out of here? This is called clipping, which takes out some of the fabric at curves. What this does is releases the seam allowance at that point, sort of like a hinge. Notice that the clipping never goes through the stitching. This is really important. Clip too far and you'll have a hole, which is never good. I turned the bodice through these straps until the whole thing was right side out. When this is pressed and flattened out, you'll have completely finished neckline and armhole edges. Following the instructions, I've basted these raw edges to hold them together. These will be sewn to the jumper skirt as if they're one layer of fabric, so basting keeps everything in place. I've also added some top stitching around the neck and armhole straps, and it really looks great with the ribbon ties. I used white thread to pick up the white in the ribbon. Now that the bodice is ready to go, I'm going to put it to the side and get started on the skirt. You may notice that the instructions for the skirt do not follow right after the instructions for the bodice. Go to page 2, number 29, under the heading, Continue as follows for all views. Like I did for the bodice, I've clipped the notches on the skirt front and back, and now I'm using my tracing wheel and dressmaker's tracing paper to mark the folding lines for the pleats on the skirt front. Following the instructions, I folded along the lines I just marked to create the three pleats in the front. It was really important for me to follow them so I got the directions of the pleat just right. As you can see here, the pleats are folded over on the right side of the fabric, so the extra fabric is underneath. I've basted the pleats across the top just to hold them in place for now. I've sewn the two skirt back pieces together at the back seam with the right sides of the fabric facing each other. There are two cute little pleats in the back, too. These are made the same general way as the pleats in front, just folded a little differently. As always, follow the instructions to get the folding direction just right. Just like with the bodice earlier, I've sewn the skirt front to the skirt back at the side seams, with the right sides of the fabric facing each other. 
Once again, the notches in the side seams were super helpful in matching everything up perfectly. And by the way, the skirt actually has two sets of notches. One set to match up the skirt front and the other set to match the back pieces together. Notice that I left the top of the seam open from the notch up. When I sew the seam shut in a 5 8 inch seam, I left this open. But don't worry, there's a really good reason for this, I promise. Now that all of my skirt side seams are sewn and pressed, it's time to bring back the bodice and get these two together. I've pinned the bodice to the skirt with the right sides of the denim facing each other. I have all sorts of matching points to make sure I have put these together properly. I've got notches in the front and back, the side seams of the bodice and the skirt, and even the cut edges of the back to match up. At this point, everything matches up perfectly, and I'm ready to sew these two pieces together. This is where all that basting really pays off. The bodice lining stays in place, and the pleats stay in place. And then you can just pull out all those basting stitches when you're finished. I've sewn the bodice and the skirt together and pressed the seam up towards the bodice. This is one of those times where it wouldn't be the best idea to press the seam open, since there's a lot of extra fabric in the pleat. That would get really bulky if it were pressed down. See this open space here? This was left open on purpose up till now. Now it's time to put in the back zipper, which will make it so much easier to get in and out of this jumper. Open up the zipper and lay it under the right side of the opening so it looks like this. Make sure that the folded, pressed edge is right up against the right hand zipper teeth. Close up the zipper and lay the jumper flat on the table. Smooth the left side opening over the zipper. See how it covers the teeth and leaves a little flap over them? This is exactly what you want it to look like, with the zipper teeth covered and the opening in a straight line with the rest of the back seam. I've sewn the zipper in and followed the instructions exactly. Whatever you do, make sure you clear the zipper teeth when you stitch. Don't let the needle stray. Sewing over the zipper can break your needle and get in the way of the zipper working. This hook and eye at the top is sewn in by hand and finishes the opening perfectly. I've put the jumper on this dress form to show you how to finish this off. It's easier for you to try the jumper on yourself and have a friend help you out, but for me, this is better. If you take the strap, smooth it down the back just until you run out of slack. Tuck it in right here, hold it in place, and pin it down like this. After I took this off the form, I just hand sewed the straps down on the inside, sewing them to the lining. On the outside, I sewed across the back with the machine, right over the original top stitching and going through the bodice and the strap together to really hold everything in. To finish the hem, I folded the edge under a quarter of an inch and pressed it down so that I have a nice clean edge to work with. Then I folded the edge up again another two inches, which is the real hem. As I sew the hem, I'll keep my stitching as close to the finished edge as possible. Since this edge is straight, following along it like this means my hem stitching will be straight too. How cool is this? I've got a great jumper I can wear a bunch of different ways, and I made it with fabric, ribbon, and threads I picked out myself. I hope you've learned how easy it is to sew your own clothes and show off your own sense of style. Why rely on retail?